My concern really yeah. is that he's under the influence, and it's very obvious. A Miami family who told police they believed a drunk driver rear-ended their car is questioning why the responding police officer did not appear to investigate that. NBC6 investigator Tony Pipichone has been trying for months to get answers from Miami-Dade police. And Tony, what did you find? Well, for one thing, Jackie, that driver is a prominent Miami-Dade police officer himself. Husband of a major, brother of a candidate for sheriff. And it's taken months for the department to release video to us, this video, while withholding other records about a crash that happened 18 months ago. When Officer Anthony Satillan pulled up to the minor rear end crash here on Southwest 216th Street, How's it going? he's greeted with a fist bump by a police recruit who went to the scene to retrieve the at fault driver. Well, that was good. I'm going to take him home because he's a little shit. Is he all right? He's okay. They walk up to that man, one of his teachers in the academy. What's up, my brother? How are you? Officer Willie Knapp, still in the jersey from that morning's charity softball event for a fallen colleague, Detective Cesar Echeverry. On the back, the last name of his wife, Major Vanessa Holden Knapp. On the front, the police district she commands, the hammocks. After softball, the couple, the recruit, and others spent a few hours at this bar and restaurant in Kendall, according to a source who was there that night. But the couple split up, and approaching midnight, Willie Knapp rear-ended this Lexus that was stopped in line at a red light. Uh, you're in which car? No, he was in this car. I'm his mom. I showed up after the fire. Juliette Samalot was waiting for her 16-year-old son, RJ, to pick her up at a friend's house. Instead, she got a call parents dread. He had just been driving all of 30 days, and it was like, Mom, I just got in a car accident. There were no injuries or major damage, but first RJ and later his mom say they sent something wrong with Officer Willie Knapp. First, RJ says Knapp offered him cash for the damage if he did not call police. Then, as his mom told the investigating officer almost immediately... My concern really yeah. is that he's under the and it's very obvious. Yeah, I, I need to know. RJ told us later. There was one point where he actually fell on me. And his mother's take after she arrived? He couldn't stand straight. Like, he, you know, he kept doing the swaying thing, and then he was waving his arms and dropping his phone everywhere. At one point, his phone, like, he swung his arm, and his phone went, like, literally flying. She twice told Santillan she felt Knapp was intoxicated. But Santillan's body cam does not show him approaching Knapp again. And he wrote in his report, no alcohol was suspected. This first exchange is their only recorded interaction. How's it going? What's up, my brother? How are you? How are you? The lesson RJ takes away from all this? There's a lot of power differential. Um, when I'm a minor, and he's a grown man, and he's a cop, and I'm just another person. If the roles were reversed... Yeah, I definitely would have like lost my license, gone to jail. Now, without a DUI investigation, there's no proof whether or not Knapp was, in fact, impaired. He was driven home from the scene in his SUV by the recruit, those present tell us. Now, Santillan concluded Knapp was at fault for following too closely, but did not cite him for that or for having an expired tag. We've requested interviews with Santillan and Knapp, whose brother Mario Knapp is running for sheriff but have not received a response. And we still don't know what discipline, if any, resulted from this, as the department says it's still processing our months-old request for records. Tony Pipitone, NBC6 News.